Nobody wanted to come outside today, I see. It's not that bad. I wasn't in Kansas City. It was cold. Uh, but I've, I've been in my share of cold weather games being a Northeastern guy, so I've seen and played in worse. Yeah. What did you take away, I guess, from how, how you guys played the second half of that game? Um, there's a lot of a lot of positives um, in the course of that game, obviously, knowing that they were a really good offense and uh, the challenge that we had to face going into it. Uh, so there was a lot of positives. You see guys getting comfortable uh, with the things that we're asking them to do. Um, schematically, um, guys t did a good job of taking ownership of that. Um, but obviously, it was a good day on third down and the run defense and things of that nature. Uh, but we just got to continue to find ways to uh, take the ball away. Um, obviously, to create more opportunities for the offense to find ways to win the game. You know, obviously not trying to feel good and there's no moral victories. It's about getting wins. Um, but there's things that we can build off of in that game. Getting explosives out of the run, was that really focus? That's what it really is always about. You know, it's, that was a big deal. He's not having the, the, the 30 and 40 and 50 yard run is what makes all the difference in the world. You don't give up an explosive, you can keep people under 100 and you feel a lot better. And we've had games like that, you know, where it's been where you can hold people down and you get a huge run and it makes you feel like dirt the rest for, you know, the whole game. So uh, that was a big part of it. You eliminate explosives and you can help keep points off the board. They coincide. What do you feel like the takeaways have been coming? You know, they, usually when they come, they come in bunches. You know, takeaways and sacks is just one of those deals where, you know, you get into a rhythm, uh, guys get into a flow of things, or you get opportunities and they come. You know, obviously you want to keep continue to hunt for them as many opportunities as you can. Um, but that's just say we just got to keep harping on what we do. We work on it every single week. It's just been tough, but we got to get back on it. We got to find ways to get, make that happen. Did teams do anything differently, though, after that stretch where you were getting so many takeaways? Yes, I mean, teams become obviously more conscious of it, you know, more conscious of protecting the football, uh, you know, getting two hands around and locking it up is a term we always use around here. Um, quarterback being more, you know, smart with the football and the opportunities and where he's going with it and taking his risks and things of that nature. So I can make it that much harder, but that doesn't mean that the opportunities aren't there. You just got to find uh, other ways to create them. How do you feel uh, Tease and, and Jonathan handled the safety spot with Ryan out last week? Um, I thought there were some good things. Um, that they did, obviously, things that need to be cleaned up as well. Um, you know, their one tough catch on third down with Tease and Travis Kelsey, that was, uh, that was a heck of a throw and a catch. You know, I think if you had the opportunity to do that one again, you try to go late with hands to hands and poke the ball out. Um, but there's a lot of positives um, there, but there was stuff that needs to get cleaned up, obviously, with the both of them, too. When you look at the Jets, the numbers seem maybe inconsistent for the talent that they have on the field. How would you characterize their offense? Um, I think they are, when they have Mike White playing, they seem um, more settled, calm. You can tell they have a lot of confidence in him when he's out there uh, and running the offense. Um, they are a physical team up front. You know, they do want to make it a point to go and run the ball. Uh, Brees Hall, obviously, that was a big loss for them. The kid's a really talented player, looking at the films from earlier in the season. Uh, but the other backs they have, they all run hard. They're physical. Uh, two quality tight ends in the receiving core. Uh, quality guys and a lot of depth, and obviously Garrett Wilson is a really talented kid with a bright future. So uh, this is a talented group. Um, they have obviously have a quarterback coming in that they feel good about and they are confident in. Um, so you know we just gotta we gotta make sure we're ready and prepared. Do you expect to see Strebler at all? Or? I would anticipate it. You know he's a guy obviously that can do some of his own read things, quarterback runs, things of that nature. And obviously anytime you have you know, issues or whatnot during the course of the season. Um, if it's wildcat stuff or whatever the case may be, you always prepare yourself just as if it shows. If it doesn't, at least you were prepared for it. The play Tariq made on the deep balls, what kind of asset is that for a quarterback when even if everything's not going perfectly in play, you can, you can still recover? Uh, that was a heck of a football play. You know, those are the recovery speed, the makeup speed. Should have had a guy in the post in that situation, so he kind of saved the day <laughs> on that particular play. There's not a lot of guys in this league that can recover like that and go make that, and we've kind of seen that in those situations. Um, with that talent, that ability, that effort, the strain, you know, we're on him because he should have just went and picked the ball off. You're going bust to your, bust your tail like that to get back there and catch the goddamn thing. Excuse my language, but <laughs> <laughs> so it was a heck of a play. Is that why uh, the receiver got a step on him because he thought he had safety help? Uh, he should have. He should have had safety help on that one. Absolutely, he's just zoning his third, and uh, you continue to carry the route. But they should have had a guy there. But nonetheless, things happen like that during the course of the game. It was a great recovery. DK huh? said it was good that, or it's good that Tariq and Sauce came in in the same year. They can always have that competition, just kind of knowing where they are. I don't know that Tariq needs any more competition, but mm -hmm. does it draw something out of him this week? 
No, I don't. I would hope that, in a natural sense, that it doesn't. You know, let it just worry about, you know, being the best version of yourself, um, the opponent you have to play. He's not going to line up across from Sauce Gardner not one single time. He's got to cover, you know, Chris Garrett and Corey Davis and the rest of these guys at the wide receiver group. So I think sometimes when you make it about that, you lose sight on what's important in the course of the game, which is to do your job. Um, but, you know, in terms of the comparisons and whatnot, you guys are going to make sure that carries on for years to come. And, uh, and they're both um, obviously great football players, but we're excited and we love having Tariq because he's got such a bright future ahead of him and we're proud of what he's done so far. Nobody feels was tough. talking about Defensive Player of the Year with him before the season started. He's had a ton of attention and fame come his way. How have you seen him handle all that? He's, he hasn't changed one bit. You know, uh, he stayed uh, even keel, level headed, and humble the whole time through. Uh, that's in his nature of who he is. Um, we actually had a conversation today just talking about as things happen and you get to off seasons and whatnot, you know, you're going to have a lot of things come your way, you know, whether it be endorsement deals, the media coverage, all types of things. And to be able to manage it all and stay focused on the task at hand because generally you make your biggest jump from year one to year two um, as a young player. And so he has the opportunity to do that. And now we're in the midst of a season, but you can never start too early with talking to young guys to make sure you have their attention on um, what the big picture is for them so they don't lose sight of it because you don't want to be late. And he just, he has so many things in front of him for the future that he has. Um, he's just an impressive kid all the way around. And how'd you feel about the pass rush uh, against the Chiefs? Uh, it was a tough day, obviously, with it being so cold. It's definitely not a, uh, a pass rusher's dream in that environment. Um, outside of Chris Jones, they had some of the same issues too. Um, but, you know, it was it was a struggle. You know, some of the games and whatnot, you just want to continue to, the explosiveness off the ball were a little late from time to time. Um, the cohesiveness on the games were late on in those situations. Um, the one free run we had with Cody Barton and DT got to clean up on it. You know, we got to continue. I got to do a better job of creating some stuff pressure wise to try to help some of those things out with those guys um, when you're having a rough day like that. But there's also a trade off when you deal with a team that thrives on explosives. You know, you don't expose yourself too many times either. What about the weather? Is it, is it the footing? Uh, it's hard to break a sweat and get loose when it's, the, when it's that cold, you know. So it's a it's a challenge, you know, in those situations. But yeah, not so much the footing, but the the guy you could. When I was sitting there watching him, like we look like we're running in mud right now. He said Daryl's cleaned up some things technique wise, maybe the last one. So what I guess what did you see? He's gotten comfortable, you know, with everything and uh, in his role and the responsibilities within it, you know, and now he has a full grasp of everything, you know, package wise. So he's gotten as a lot of it just the comfortability for him and getting into it. So he's done a really good job with that. We've got to get him out there more and more. Uh, but I, you can see he's mentally slowed down for him a little bit, so it's good. What way Mafe improved or grown the most? We got to get boy more. We got to get him on the field more. Um, talk to the staff about that, you know, during the flow of it. And that's the one thing that is different, you know, during the flow of the game when I'm worried about the call and the adjusting and whatnot, don't quite see the substitutions and the rotations as before when that was my sole responsibility. Uh, but got to make sure we get him on the field because when he's out there, he's being impactful. Uh, so that means obviously if he's doing that on a lesser amount of reps, we need to get, obviously get him out there more so he can play more and continue to develop. It's hard to develop when you're on the sideline. So uh, he's done a really nice job. Again, overall, you know, we've got to get him more rush opportunities. He's been good in the run game all year long, uh, but got to get him more opportunity to third down in uh, two minute situations and pass rush, too. How does the that run work? defense? I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. About the run defense, is that something of a surprise? You maybe thought he was the other way, a pass rush guy, he would grow into that run down? No, I actually felt that he was a kid that was a good run defender, you know, good in coverage, good in space, kind of good all around player, and that the pass rush stuff, we had to work and develop a plan for him. Um, that was going to be the part for him in the later development. Um, so he's actually held true to where we thought he was going to be strong, uh, but he's shown things in practice where um, all the tools and whatnot we see in the pass rush, we just got to continue to give him opportunities, so we got to do a better job. I have to do a better job with that. I was going to ask you about the substitutions. Do you just leave that up to the position coaches? or No, we talk. that's something that we talk about and we discuss during the course of the week on how we'll handle those things. But obviously when you get into the flow of the game, and there's so many different scenarios and how things go. Um, you know, sometimes this could be a momentum thing and it may knock you off or change how you want to handle a substitution and putting a group out and, and so on and so forth. So those things can deviate it a little bit. But, you know, for all those guys, whether you're talking Boye, DT, Chenna, or Bruce, you know, they can all play any scenario or any, any down 
And we just got to go ahead and push forward and get Mafe out there and DT out there even that much more. Is that part of Aaron Curry learning growing a little bit as a coach? Yeah, we all, we, all, we all go through that. And it's not Aaron's fault. You can put that on me. I'm not blaming him at all. That's, you can put that on, me, on my shoulders for that. Um, but that is it's part of all of it. Sometimes it's seeing the whole big picture of it, the communication of it, and, uh, and getting the feel too. You know, so, yeah, I would put that on me. That's not on him. Without having Al the last couple of weeks, how have you felt like the interior guys have played there? I mean, they've always the guys have you know played hard you know <laughs> and given it but you know some of the uh, situations in the flow of the game is just you play good you're playing hard you're playing physical San Fran was like that and then you get a play here or a play there and then all of a sudden it's like uh, it was bad you know it's like they got like 170 yards rushing which you look at and it's like god it's awful but there's a 23 yard run and then a 55 yarder at the end well what about the other 36 carries that they had to defend they played their butt off on that so it's just they play good consistent ball we just got to now give up the big ones. The consistency thing is you're going to hear me repeat myself all the time about that. Good. Good. Right. Thanks, Appreciate everybody.